Let's talk about the properties of ionic compounds for a second, guys. I know we focused a lot about, in the last uh, few class periods, we've talked about ionic bonds. We've talked about naming ionic compounds. But let's focus, uh, uh, for this video, we're going to talk about the properties of ionic compounds. When you see the word ionic, I want you to think, uh, I want you to think of something. Okay, when you, whenever you see this word ionic, and what I'd like you to think about is the periodic table right here, how it has a staircase. Ionic bonds occur between a metal and a non-metal. So if you would write that down, metal and non-metal. So ionic compounds occur between a metal, so something with one of these elements when they form a chemical bond with one of these elements. So when something above the staircase bonds with something below the staircase, that's called an ionic compound. Okay? We've learned how to name them. We've, we've learned about the type of bond. They transfer electrons from one element to another element. Now let's learn about their properties. I hope that you're following along in your chapter 5 guided notes. There's something for you to write down right here. It says that ionic compounds form solid crystals at ordinary temperatures, like room temperature. Ionic compounds will form solid crystals. Maybe the most famous ionic compound that there is, is this one right here, okay? And since we've learned how to name them, how would you name this, guys? Sodium. Chloride, good. So we, that's called sodium chloride. Guys, what is sodium chloride? Salt. salt. It's table salt. We've all, you, you, you have experience with it. Is it a crystal? Does it form a solid crystal at room temperature? Yeah. yeah. So what does crystal mean? Uh, ionic compounds are organized into a characteristic crystal lattice. Okay, a crystal forms a crystal lattice structure. So I've got a little model in my classroom, but it does look like this one on the screen here. A crystal um, is made up of an organized kind of a pattern. It, it alternates between um, the positive ion and a negative ion. And so the sodium has a plus one charge. Well, it alternates. This little one here is chlorine which has a negative charge. And so it's alternating and it forms kind of the scaffold, one layer on top of another layer. That's what a crystal, like, a crystal lattice structure looks like. And so, um, anyway, all ionic compounds do that. In fact, ionic compounds are called salts. Sorry, I wrote over the top of this. A salt, when we think of the word salt, you probably just think of table salt. But in reality, all ionic compounds are salts. So would, would magnesium chloride, is this a salt? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's got a metal with a non-metal. It's an ionic compound, so that's a salt as well. Okay, let's move on. There's a, a big table in your guided notes. It's called Properties of Ionic Compounds. Take a second. Um, I'm going to hit pause here. So if you're watching the video, hit pause, uh, fill in this table, and we'll talk about it here in just a second. Okay, um, so let's talk about this table for just a second. Ionic compounds, again, it's a metal and a non-metal. So something above the staircase when it bonds with something below the staircase. The structure, they form crystals, and they're solid at room temperatures. The melting point is very high. In order to melt salt or ionic compounds, you have to get the temperature extremely high. Boiling point. They don't boil until they get a very high temperature as well. They are excellent conductors of electricity. They conduct electricity. Um, and solubility in water. What does it mean to be soluble, guys? Do you know what that means? To dissolve, yeah. And generally, Ionic compounds will dissolve or they're soluble in water. If you think about table salt, sodium chloride, if you put it in water and stir it around, 
it will dissolve. So those are some of the properties of ionic compounds. I wanted to uh, go through this slide. It says that the melting point, boiling point, and hardness of ionic compounds depends on the strength of the attraction between the ions. So we're going to compare some of these ionic compounds right here. Okay, I want to ask you which one has the highest melting and boiling point? Yeah, this one on the bottom here. MgO. Since we know how to name it, what is it called? Magnesium oxide. Very good. What can you tell me about the magnesium? So magnesium forms a plus two charge and an oxygen has a minus two charge. What can you tell me about the strength of this attraction right here? Knowing that its melting point is so high and its boiling point is so high. What can you tell me about the strength of that attraction? Very strong. Very strong okay? Magnesium and oxygen very strongly attracted to each other. Let's compare that to this compound. What's it called? Sodium iodide. Sodium iodide, yeah. What can you tell me about the attraction of the sodium and the iodine compared to magnesium and oxygen? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot weaker, right? It's still pretty strong. I mean, that's, a st that's still pretty strong. Its melting point is, is 660. That's still a high temperature, but it's not anything compared to the magnesium and the oxygen, the magnesium oxide. Anyway, um, so they all have a little bit different properties, but uh, the trend is high boiling point, high melting point. Okay, now we're going to switch gears. Um, we're we're kind of done learning about ionic compounds and ionic bonds. Now we're going to talk about a different type of chemical bond. It's called a covalent bond. Um, in your guided notes, um, there are some things to write down here, but uh, let's just introduce covalent bonds this way. A covalent bond occurs between two nonmetal atoms. Where are the nonmetals found on the periodic table, guys? Above the staircase. So these are atoms that are above the staircase. For example, hydrogen is a nonmetal. Carbon is a nonmetal. Well, they will form a bond here, represented by this line. This is called a covalent bond. So when there's two atoms that are above the staircase, they form a bond, it's called a covalent bond. Covalent bonding is, is a little bit different, so let's uh, focus on it for a second. There's something to write down in your notes here. It says covalent bonds occur between two nonmetal atoms. So if you're looking at the periodic table, here's the staircase. We're talking about atoms up here. And also one more. What other one? Hydrogen is really a nonmetal as well. Okay. In a covalent bond, the valence electrons are shared between the two atoms. So that's the main difference between ionic and covalent bonding. Remember in ionic, one atom totally gave its electron or transferred it to the other one? Well, in covalent bonds, the two atoms kind of share their valence electrons between them. Okay, and it says here to remember that atoms want to have an octet of electrons. What does octet mean? Does that mean eight? So eight electrons in its highest energy level. What do we call the electrons in the highest energy level? Valence electrons, yeah, valence electrons. So they will share valence electrons between them so that each atom at least feels like it has a full octet. So they'll share them between the two and that each atom feels like it has uh, a full octet. Okay. <clears throat> I want to focus and, and end the video with this topic right here. Uh, these two words, I want you to know the difference between a compound and a molecule, and I'm going to test it. Um, you see and you hear these words in chemistry a lot, a compound and a molecule. What's the difference 
Let's find out. Compounds. When you hear the word compound, they are formed by ionic bonds. Here's how I remember what a compound is. I want you to make this note in your guided notes. A compound has a metal. It has to have a metal in it. Because okay, ionic bonding has a metal and a nonmetal. So if it has a metal in it, it's called a compound. Well, molecules, on the other hand, are formed by covalent bonding. And we just talked about covalent bonds are formed by nonmetals. So I want you to make this note by molecules. Let's put two nonmetals. Okay, so if they're all above the staircase, it's a molecule. If there's a metal in it, it's a compound. So I've got practice problem 34 to go through. And, uh, and I want you to tell me, for each of these listed here on practice problem 34, I want you to tell me whether it is a compound. It's either going to be a compound or a molecule. OK, let's start with this substance, maybe the most well-known substance on the planet, H2O. OK, it's made up of hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen, okay? What would you say? Is it a compound or a molecule? It's a molecule, that's right. How come though? Is there a metal in water? No, hydrogen's a non-metal, oxygen's non-metal. This is held together by covalent bonds, so it's called a molecule. Okay, number two. What do you think, uh, Jaron? It's a compound. You're right. How come? What's a metal? Magnesium's a metal. This is a non-metal. Chlorine's a non-metal, so it's it's a compound. Okay, who haven't we heard from today? Gracie. Here's a pretty famous substance, CO2. It is a molecule. You're right. How come? It doesn't have a metal. Carbon's non-metal. Oxygen's a non-metal. CO2, carbon dioxide, it's what you um, breathe out every time you exhale, right? Carbon dioxide. Number four, let's go back to uh, Cheyenne. What'd you put on number four? It is a compound. How come? What's a metal? Oh, it has a metal, yeah. Iron's a metal. Oxygen's non-metal. It's held together by ionic bonds, so it's a compound. Okay, this is a very uh, famous substance as well. Does anybody know what C6H12O6 is? Yeah, if you took biology, you should know it, right? This is called glucose. Glucose, it's a sugar. Okay, uh, it's made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. What'd you guys put here? Molecule or compound? Molecule. It's a molecule, how come? Yeah, all of these are non-metals. They're all found above the staircase. They're held together by covalent bonds, so it's a molecule. Okay, I think this might be, no, there's seven of them. So the last two here. Um, number six, uh, Cassandra, we haven't, uh, what'd you put on six? It's a compound, how come? Yeah, it's a compound because strontium, which is located right here, is a metal. Hydroxide is made up of nonmetals. Good job. Okay, and finally, number um, seven, Carter. What'd you put? Compound. Compound, good. So, Carter, would this be held together by ionic or covalent bonds? Covalent. Ionic, you're right. Ionic. <laughs> He's right. Ionic. Guys, if it has a metal and a non-metal, that's an ionic bond that's called a compound. Okay. Hey, did that make sense? So, so we know the difference between a compound and a molecule now, right? Okay. Okay, um, that's pretty much it between this uh, for this video, but uh, just remember you can always use the periodic table in the staircase here. It tells you a lot. 
Everything below the staircase is what, guys? Metal. Everything above the staircase? Non-metal. What if it's what if you have one substance that's above the staircase and one that's below it? That's a compound and it's held together by what kind of bonds? Ionic, Ionic bonds. What if it's all from, uh, from above the staircase? It's not a solid. Molecule or compound? Molecule. Molecule and held together by covalent, covalent bonds. So um, hopefully you learned something new in this video and hopefully that helped.